All right, thank you all. It is um, 7.33. I would like to call the Warren Committee of January 15th to order. A happy New Year to everyone. Welcome back. It seems like it's been a while since we've gathered here. Um, but as I was, I will share later, as I was looking at the calendar later in the spring, there's an awful lot that's going to be happening in the next couple of months. So hopefully everyone has been re-energized. Um, tonight, the, um, we'll go through the minutes. So I want to just make sure we get the Q1 report from the schools that we missed earlier in December when there was a lot of snow. Um, and then we'll go over the uh, town administrator's office capital plan is really the big part of the evening. And then just get some updates on what is coming um, in the spring and to pass out the tentative calendar that sort of blocks out from now until June. Um, so first off, let's just approve the minutes. If everyone had a chance to look at the set from December the 11th. Thank you very much, Chris. I don't know if there are any um, edits or amendments anyone might have. If not, is there a motion to approve? So moved to approve. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any abstentions? Terrific. Thank you very much. Um, and let's just go right to the um, Q1 financial report. So, um, you know, we're, we're at a juncture where the, the Q2 report should soon be available, so I almost feel that this is a little bit ancient history <laughs> in terms of quarterly reporting, but, um, you know, we'll run through it. And um, so on the, um, so, so right now I'm looking at the general fund page, and the, the, the most noteworthy things here, I believe, and, and Jack or anybody else from the education subcommittee who, who was already briefed on this, you know, please, please jump in um, if, um, you know, as, as needed. So, so the, 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 most, the most interesting things here on the, the, uh, the general fund report are the salary line items, one through five. And um, so we're running positive balances at the end of the first quarter in teacher salaries and administrative salaries, although we are spending half a million more in support salaries. So, 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 so basically, in terms of teacher salaries and support salaries, um, the, you know, what's, what's happening <coughs> is that um, you know, there, there are some tr turnover savings um, um, as well as some unpaid leaves of absences. When you have the when you have turnover, their uh, positions generally not universally, but generally are are backfilled with uh, people who are earning a little bit less money. That generates savings. Um, the um, unpaid leave of absences typically you're bringing in substitutes who are employed at a, a lower rate of pay, and that that also generates savings. Um, the um, the the higher expenditures for um, Let's see, support staff on line five, uh, that's, that's driven primarily by enrollment, and that's uh, spending on additional aides and, and tutors, and to some extent there is some additional special education summer programming costs in there as well. The, the, um, the, 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 the most, other, well, the most noteworthy other line on, on this page, I think, is line 18, and that's special education transportation it's still early in the year so so i don't know where this line is going but <coughs> at the end of the first quarter we had overspent by seventy thousand. and just to be clear these are the projections right they were the, the over it's what these are not projections this is this is where we're at at the end of of, of um the quarter because my understanding no, I think, was I think this is, I think it's projected out. Yeah, because it, yeah, it's the, the column next to the balance and deficit is the projected totals. I think for most of those lines yeah. in 7 through 13, you're, you're they, right. they I, have I'm, not I'm sorry. You're right. projected anything different from the budget at right. this point. So they're, it's just, you know. All right. Um, so if, if there if there isn't anything, if there are not any questions, the, the next page is the revolt. Just the bottom line is yes. eighty one thousand to the positive. So as of the end of the fourth quarter, they were anticipating that they the you know there would be 
expenses would be in line with budget. Sure. Even a little bit positive. We have a revolving, the revolving fund report. Um, um, I'll be honest, this is one that I think is, is organized a little bit uh, in a difficult to understand way, but uh, the, the, um, uh, the, first, the first dollars column on the left, that's a 7119 balance, shows that at the beginning of the fiscal year, we had a balance of um, $2.8 million. Um, we've received $1.1 million uh, and spent um, almost half a million in the first quarter. Encumbrances are known bills that are not yet paid. Those are 296000 um, So total spending um, plus those bills that are not yet paid, that's about 795000 And then the 93019 <coughs> balance, that is um, um, three Three million. We're about three hundred thousand, three hundred and seventeen thousand um, ahead at the end of the, the first quarter. And I would just point out that um, because this is the um, first quarter, a lot of fees are paid in mm -hmm. September for the semester or for the year. Um, so that's why you see the larger balances here in this particular report. All right, that, that's all I was had planned to say about that page. The, um, the, the next page is the federal and state grant report. If, if you look at the, um, the, the, the column called Munis category, the 3,000 the, 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 the 3, numbered lines are, are all federal grants. The 4,000 numbered lines are, um, are, are state grants. Um, this is another report that's organized in a little bit of a confusing way, the, but the sort of the, the top block of eight lines, those are, t those are 2020 grant awards. The, there's a, um, another three line block of 2019 grant awards that are shown below that. Um, those represent grants that were awarded in 2019 that are spending out this year. Um, the a number of those grants give the town the ability to spend the money over a two-year period, so um, that's why. The yeah, yeah, and, and ex exactly. Do they expire at the end of calendar 2020? So, end of fiscal so, year. So the, two the, the 2019, the, for example, the circuit breaker has to be expended this year. The 2019 circuit, circuit breaker has to be expended this year or, or we lose access to the funds. Um, and, and so the, the you know, I, I'm not going to go into, I'm not going to go into every grant line, but the big ones here are the IDEA grants, which are the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act grants on line, um, on line two in, in the first block and line one in the second block. And uh, this is basically SPED services funding. Um, um, METCO is another big one. This pays for um, uh, Boston students to be able to attend um, school here in Belmont. Um, and um, Circuit Breaker is, is the, the largest. And um, as you can see, the 2020 award is a little bit lower than the 2019 award. And it's uh, primarily the, the Circuit Breaker that, that will um, provide the, um, the funding, so to speak, that allows the schools to forego up to $1.7 million to assist the town with the budget. Part of the reason that it's lower is that there are lower out-of-district tuitions last year, and it looks like this year, although it's early in the year to tell. <coughs> right, because it lags, right? It's based on the, the prior <laughs> year's number of yeah. students. One of the things that John Phelan has mentioned is that the state recommends that communities um, bank a full year worth of that reserve as a cushion for unanticipated expenditures. We don't, I think, historically ex uh, bank that much, but the idea there is that that is a reserve to uh, protect against 
out of district tuitions that can be very volatile. They're very expensive for an individual student and it's relatively unpredictable how many people will need out of district services in a given year. So there can be a lot of volatility in that line. You can have just a handful of students who will really swing that spending um, depending upon what happens year, year to year. Great. And um, that's all I had planned to say. No, that, thank you very much. That's, that's good. And as you say, it does seem like the end of the first quarter was some time ago. And I just wanted to say thank you also just as we distributed as an FYI was just the enrollment numbers. I think this was as of October. And that was, um, as I always think about, we talk constantly about how the enrollment has been increasing. But I think it's helpful for the Warren Committee just to see the numbers in front of them from time to time. So even if every quarter when we get the um, quarterly report, maybe just have a snapshot because I know this also varies. Um, so so I, 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 actually, I actually have the, the January numbers. I didn't bring them. That's totally fine. But, this but is, they're, this already, is all they're already higher than the October numbers. <laughs> right. And the so. October numbers, Mike, I'm recalling off memory, were 60-ish yeah. larger than last year across the system, which is down a little bit from our year-to-year -year variation, but right on target from what the enrollment study uh, that was done a number of years ago put us um, McKibben. McKibben. McKibben, thank McKibben, you. Yeah. I couldn't, yeah. Um, yeah, done so. about two or three, I think it was updated about two or three years ago. Yeah, but it is, it is tracked remarkably well to that projection. The October one is the um, DAFI yes. date, right? That's right. like yeah. your right. yes. cement date or whatever. Okay. <coughs> be like so these are really the ones to compare year to year because right. that's the, when they're filed with the state. Um, and are any of the class, I can't remember what the, um, the thresholds were for target class sizes, but are any of the class sizes above the school committee recommendation at this point, or have we kept them all below? No, there, there are some, there are some, and um, I think it's principally in the middle school um, where we are over. The high school, too. I mean, you can see they're all high, but even grades five and six, 387, 386. Um, they're very big classes. Yeah, they are. So I didn't save a copy of that for myself. Uh, the um, great. So we, yeah. we can talk about this in I more have, no. detail at a later date. But, but this is, I have copies of again, helpful, I think, just to have in front of us. Thank you. Okay. Any questions? Or we'll be looking for the second quarter, as you said, probably in another month or six weeks. Um, that's great. All right, let me get back to my agenda here. <coughs> so next, let's move to the um, capital plan. For FY. And thank so, you very much for sending it a, yes. in um, advance. That's very helpful. So this year, um, because I had an, an assistant town administrator, um, <laughs> I, I, um, I decided to utilize uh, John and, and his skill set. So I asked John to take over capital and to um, then go ahead, we, we met with the department heads, um, we talked about capital and what their needs were, and then John, I, myself, and um, Glenn Castro, the budget director, sat down and, and we tried to kind of come up with what we thought um, from our priorities and perspective, what we thought the capital plan should look like, and then we submitted it to the capital budget committee. So I'm gonna let John take it tonight. Sure. Um, and I have some hard copies tonight too, if anyone wants one, so I can. Sorry, I probably should have passed these out at the beginning. Happy birthday. Who emailed it? Was it you who emailed it? Who emailed it? Uh, I think it was Glenn. 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 From it was Matt. Matt. It was Matt. Yesterday. Someone right? from my office, yep. We never know if you guys want paper or electronics. Thank you. Yeah. I am too. Not to make you look binders, John, but I got one. Oh, good. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. This is the thank you, I think. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you got one already? This is our recommendation oh, based on the request oh, this is we received. Recommendation. Yeah, this is my office's recommendation. So, Patrice, what then goes to capital budget? Do, does the whole list of requests? Go we, to capital budget, or do you trim it? Or? No, we trimmed it. We, we sent them we, the whole list. Did we send them the whole list? <coughs> so, um, I thought we trimmed it. Yeah, so 
well, why don't we just walk through the first couple of pages, and that I think it will help kind of uh, form uh, what it is. Um, if you go to the um, the transmittal letter, which is in tab one, um, it just discusses what we have for available funds to apply to for capital this year. Um, the one thousand nine hundred ninety-three two fifty-four is uh, sorry one million one million one thousand. <laughs> Um, is for uh, roads and sidewalks. Um, that's a kind of annual number that we have. Um, the uh, one million uh, four. It, sorry, there's actually a typo on this. I apologize. Uh, it's one million four eighty. Um, next tab. Oh, I can't believe I got that. Wrong. That's all right. Five thousand. Oh, no, I was right. Yeah. 1,475,268. Uh, I actually had that right. Sorry. Um, that's discretionary money, and that's typically what the budget committee will look at to try to um, determine. Um, uh, the town administrator's office, uh, Patrice, myself, and Glenn sat down and uh, tried to present a recommended um, balanced budget to um, the budget committee for those discretionary items. They will then take those from there, meet with the departments, and they may decide to make some changes. But based on our conversations with department heads um, and all of the requests that we received, we felt this was a good way to um, try to address all of the needs of the community. Um, and but the, the capital budget committee does get all of the requests. Absolutely, yes. yep. okay. and they, they will meet with all of the department right. heads. Um, the one million two ninety nine fifty is from either water or sewer enterprise funds, and um, those are uh, the requests that they've submitted. We're recommending funding all of the requests that were in for water and sewer um, because the the funding is available through um, those enterprise funds. John, uh, just a question. Is that Those are funds that by manipulating the water and sewer rates you can generate going forward, or those are funds that are sitting there in cash <coughs> now that you can utilize for the capital needs? Uh, those are funds that are available now, so through retained Retain earnings. earnings. Okay. Um, and I believe um, one of the requests might be a borrowing request, so that would be a portion of that. Um, if you go to the um, kind of after that first page, we give you a breakdown of the town administrator's recommendation in terms of the request. You can see all of the requests that were submitted. Um, I actually threw a curveball at the department heads this year because why not? Um, <laughs> but we changed the form that we used for this year. We actually worked with our IT department. And now all the forms we have, um, they submitted them online. So we have a catalog of all the requests that have come in. So if something gets bumped from one year to the next year, um, the department's heads only have to update that. Um, and then all of the requests from 22 through 26, because we do have a future year look within this, um, those are in there. So they can just update that year to year, which is uh, an efficiency for them. So they don't have to keep reproducing these forms. Um, tabs two through two through ten are the fiscal year twenty one requests. Um, then at tab eleven, we have a multi year summary. This is where we look at years 20, 22 through twenty six, um, and then we have a detail of those requests on the last tab. So I think the most helpful form within this document is on tab, um, specifically looking at fiscal year 21 is on tab two, two thank you, um, where it kind of gives you a really high level summary of all the fiscal year 21 requests. Um, we put it on 11 by 17 so it was uh, readable for you. Uh, and we also have a little bit of a description. The other thing that we added this year is we wanted to understand the urgency of the need from um, the departments that were submitting the requests. Um, all of these requests we felt were important, um, but uh, some of them, you know, based on need, um, we felt, you know, might rise to the top. So uh, some of them looking at a system failed, we figured that a, a, a pretty important um, thing to address. 
Some of them are needing multiple repairs. Uh, the system might need multiple repairs. Um, and then it might be something um, like gaining efficiency. So every um, request that came in, uh, we asked the departments to code it based on their urgency of need. Um, so I guess that's the high level. Um, yeah. The, um, the, the one request that keeps coming back uh, year after year that um, is something that um, in the town administrator's recommendation, we felt based on the priorities it couldn't be fully funded. That is the, the fuel tanks that are at the Public Works Department. We've deferred that for a couple of years. Um, the request kind of keeps coming back and we haven't been able to approve it. We feel that it would be prudent to fund it at some level this year, hoping that we could get the second round of funding next year. These are tanks that are underground. We can no longer um, uh, we can no longer insure those tanks because of the way that they're constructed. Constructed, so it is a risk to the community. So, uh, at some point, um, you know, sooner than later, um, we should tackle that. Um, bringing the tanks above ground. Um, and getting them up to the standard of where they need to be. The, the other reason why we are recommending the tank removal is um, for equity reasons. A lot of the facility uh, requests uh, were school related and it didn't really address some of the town side of the buildings. Um, so we felt that we didn't want um, the town side to be neglected. And as John said, this was a request that has been deferred year over year. So we felt this was a good time to address it. Again, so, this is our recommendation. So the, the capital <coughs> budget committee will kind of go through their po process of meeting with all of the departments that have submitted a request. Uh, we've worked with um, uh, just actually today I started reaching out to the department heads to um, and the superintendent of schools to schedule meetings to meet with the um, the capital budget committee. Uh, we'll get those scheduled uh, hopefully. Uh, I think the last date we have those meetings scheduled is like the middle of March. Uh, they will then take all of that information, review everything, uh, and come back with their recommendation uh, on this. Were there any hands raised or questions? Just, I just happened to flip to the library page and I noticed for the long term forecast, the next five years, there's about five million, four million dollars worth of. Um, expected needs um, how do we dovetail that with the idea that the library is going to be possibly reconstructed because I, I know some of those things you, you might be able to put off are there things that have to be done or can you put everything off yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think I think the goal would be to push them off as far as we we can until we know what the the final decision is. Unless um, it's a life safety critical right. issue. Uh, I'll give you an example. One of the requests that the library has on for this year is to upgrade the fire alarm systems. So um, the uh, library director had a conversation with um, uh, the fire chief um, in terms of what could we actually. Do like can we get by for a while with it? Take the this, old high school one out. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> we so paid a million dollars for about two years now, ago. Yeah. So the system itself right now has not had any malfunctions or issues. The challenge we run into is if it does go down or the system runs into an issue, we will have to shut the library down for a couple of days potentially, which will have a service impact to the community. But at a cost of $125,000 with something that hasn't failed yet, it's, it's a difficult decision to make. Um, but as a library, we continue to move forward with the library, we'll have more of those decisions that we'll have to try to hold off as long as possible. If it does fail, we can replace it with, um, they can, I guess, craft or make uh, a panel that's similar to what they have. It'll be a $25,000 um, need and then um, again the library would that be down for a period of time but to invest hundred and twenty five thousand dollars into something that uh, potentially in a few years uh, might not okay. be there um, are those difficult challenges to, to weigh in, in the other problem too with the library obviously is when you're trying to project out capital if if a debt exclusion would fail it, for the library you're gonna the town will have to 
invest serious amounts of capital into that building. Um, so we're trying to, it's almost like you have two capital budgets if you're looking out for five years. And so no. we have that in mind when we're having I understand that. I just was curious about how you make those decisions. Yeah. The, uh, the we, we did invest a huge amount in, 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 in a <coughs> high school part of the alarm system that had to be replaced at that point, at which point they said, oh, yeah, but it's movable. We can take it out. And my understanding is it really isn't at the end of the day. Yeah. Just one more. Sure, um, the only other thing I'd like to um, point out that kind of stands out, if you look at the facilities um, requests, you'll see that they kind of trail off once you get by 2023. Um, the facilities director is working uh, with his team right now to try to really assess the buildings in terms of what they need. I had, uh, we had had a conversation about asking him to try to really build up to 26. And he felt he would be doing more guessing, and he didn't feel that that was productive. So what um, he's um, going to do is work on this plan and then hopefully have some um, a, a kind of updated detail of what those needs are um, within the next few months. So it didn't make it into this document, but he didn't want to just kind of guess and throw stuff in. So uh, we felt it would be more productive for him to spend his time really kind of identifying and addressing those needs. Um, question on this so I'm on you know in your second tab and the library you've got upgrade fire alarm system it's a hundred and sixty five thousand is that then you are recommending that for this year because I thought no, you were saying you weren't if you look to the next column it says TA rack you see this it's a, it's it's if you go right. down that column you won't see oh, a number that's oh, oh yeah I see okay so anywhere, any place you don't see a number is what we're not recommending. So then these so are the all request. of the requests for 21. Yes. And the TA rec are the ones that you are recommending that we do. Yes. To Thank the capital budget committee for discussion. Recommending to the capital budget. Yep. Right. Yep. Thank you. Yep. And does that equal more? I didn't look at the bottom number. Does that equal more than what the capital budget has to spend, or does that equal pretty much what it's the capital budget It's just a little under. Yeah, what the, what the TA recommendation is, is in balance with what uh, is available for um, funding. I guess I have one other question. Um, like, I'm just looking at some things like Wellington Paint. At, at what, what, where do you draw the line between what is capital and what is maintenance? Um, <laughs> honestly, it, it, it's... Yeah. So it's discussion, it's amount, it's year of life. I mean, if you paint or if we fix the Wellington paint building, we're hoping that lasts a considerable amount of time. So it's the life of the project, the amount of the project. Those are really the two driving factors. And is that the exterior? I mean, that's is there the anything? Exterior. 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 Yeah. The so that's the issue with things pe peeling off the building side off. of the building. Isn't it? Yes. This is yeah. just sort of an experiment, yeah. is that right? Just sort of. Yeah, standard. exterior. Yep. And in, in the. Um, the information that we have is the um, original, I don't know if it was the architect or someone with the building is also going to chip in and potentially help with this. Yep. So, um, yeah, Steve's tracked down some money. Yep. And this, it looks like, isn't solving the whole problem, right? This is the first phase. This phase request is the first phase. It's to redo a failed yeah, section. Yeah, 21 and 22. That w I think he's requesting 50 in 21 and then 50 again in 22. In 22, he would request more to do the second phase if it's successful. Yep. Yes. Yep. Can you, um, uh, so what are the other, um, the other capital, this isn't really the whole capital budget for the town, because we also have, of course, the community preservation, but I don't want to talk about that. But then there's these, the, then there's the, um, the sort of um, opaque, there's that thing where people can donate money for whatever it is and the treasurer decides to put some money. Oh, the IT. capital endowment. Right, so the capital endowment, um, that is not in here, right? No, that comes in as a general revenue. Okay, and how much is that usually? 125,000. 125, and so, would somebody who wants, like, say, I, the idea that that's for IT is just, that's just something that the treasurer has decided himself, right? That's not. Well, I think the, I, I don't know how the inception of the endowment fund um, began, but it, from what I understand, it's for IT expenses within the budget. 
So it comes okay. into play. So would someone who wants a department person who wants I, has IT needs, would they first try you, and then failing that, they would go to the treasurer? Or do you, as you're evaluating IT, think, oh, we can put that over to the treasurer? So My understanding is the Capital Endowment Committee has met in the past for special um, requests. And they Capital have Endowment Committee is the one for the treasurer's fund. Yeah. Right. Right. And th there have been rare instances where that has occurred, but you'd have to talk to Floyd and about that committee and how they okay. Can that I out. suggest that maybe, because this is a really helpful, super helpful document, it's really, it's great. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm wondering whether you maybe for next year could add in a tab on the Capital Endowment Fund, even if it's an FYI. Like it's not just so we start to get a little bit more, and even to add in a chart of the C, of the yeah. CPA money. Yeah, we had done money. that last year. You're not saying you have control over it, but you're saying here's CPA money, it was spent on X, like here's the FYI, and then there's some So chart in terms the of the bigger piece that you talked about, yeah. um, you know, the Long-Term Capital Budget Committee, we're hoping to start that, get yeah. that up and running. I think they're going to be looking at the broader capital yeah. of the town and then also revenue sources and things like that. So okay. Cause, once cause we get that, that would include things like repointing the bricks on the police station. Which it would include capital as any long-term capital, right, that we would, we would Tennis deem. courts that we yeah. might need to build, yeah. things like that. Yeah. So mm -hmm. even if you didn't have control, you'd, it would be a helpful, it would make this document kind of go to the next level in terms of its helpfulness. Yeah. I agree. I think the long-term capital planning and, and this type of planning, we're, we're trying to you know, yeah. show a, yeah. a much more comprehensive way of doing it, plus, plus the funding. Just for future, um, it'd be nice if you had the location column in this as well, because if you look, for example, at um, creation of secure vestibule shows up twice in the description. Nothing says. I just looked it up. It's like Burbank and something else. But I was I was trying to fit all the cells in. I know. I know. Just absolutely. And I, I, you know, kind of looking back on it, I probably could have updated in the description somewhere to have moved that over so it was a little bit clearer. So um, thanks. Certainly going forward, absolutely. I think I missed this. The, the, the money for the fuel tank replacement, the recommendation is less than the request? Correct. So in going through and looking at all the requests, um, we would have to, we would have had to have um, bumped some requests out that we felt were critical for this year, but we also felt it was prudent to um, start funding the fuel tanks because if we, if we don't put any money in it, we're going to be the same point next year and if we can put a significant amount in this year hopefully we have a lesser amount that we'll need for the following year so that the intent is that work can be completed in the next yeah two over two years yeah. and yeah. and unfortunately from the conversations we've had with public works is that it's a kind of a two-step process so we actually have to go in and dig out the old tanks when we dig them out it depends on how much of that soil has been um, impacted um, we have to dig that out remove it fill it back in, pour the pad, and then put the new one on top. So kind of my question was, well, can we do part of it now and part of it, but, but we really can't from a sequencing standpoint, so we have to do it all at once. Is there any information available about whether there's been leakage? Have there any been soil samples taken or anything? Nothing reported. Are those still in use? Yes. Yeah. And so what vintage are they, sorry? It I mean, roughly. Old. <laughs> old. <laughs> Yeah, they're pretty, they've been in there a while. There's old and there's ancient. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. I, I just. They're fiberglass, though, so that is uh, relatively newer. You know, they right. used to be steel, yeah. um, which corroded. Uh, yeah. Fiberglass is a 90s technology, maybe, mm -hmm. something like that? 60s, 70s, I think. Really? And do they have to be thing? dug out? Yes. They yes. They have to be by state code or something. Yeah. Yeah. By code, they have to be above ground now. Fiberglass. So we can't bury anything else, like to have um, this any other fuel <coughs> tanks down below, because yes. they want to be using an underground tank. Is this, is this diesel fuel or both? Oh. Oh. I, I, I just don't even, I've never asked this question or heard anything about it. it do most towns have their own fuel supply for police? And yeah. I know of a lot. police and DPW and fire or? Okay. DPW, police, fire, yeah. all town vehicles. Yeah. We're not, you know. Yeah, no, I just was curious about that. I, I can never say that thought of it. 
the other two communities that I worked in, they had fuel Yeah, tanks. three of mine did. Is the sewer, um, so that's, um, they're doing this through a bond issue of 3.6 million. Uh, Which, the sewer? Yeah. 600,000 a year. I'm not, it's, I don't know if it's that the case or not, or if it's just maybe they're just spending that. No, that's, um, yeah. no, that's the operating budget. Okay. And are they, do you know? That's the operating amount see. every year. It Last is. year it was okay. 500. I think it went up 100,000. Okay, they're trying to, okay. And this might be not something that you can answer, but I, I mean, I know we're in violation. It references this over here. Is this, is this, like, what's kind of their plan for getting us uh, on track? I don't know enough about what we're. Yeah, kind of I don't have to talk to the chief development director, who also. What, who is it? I'm sorry. Uh, Glenn Clancy. Okay. okay. Um, we can have a conversation with him and report back. Okay. I believe we're on track. I forget the year. 20, 25 or whatever the agreement is that <coughs> and this, we made. Get, this each year gets state. us to that okay. to meet that agreement yeah, with that, EPA. I, that sounds right. I think actually Glenn reported out sometime in the last six months, I think in front of the board, the yeah. status of the project. And I don't yeah. recall the exact specifics, yeah. but I think the tone was okay. we are meeting our commitments with the EPA's you know, consent yeah. decree and we feel good about the process. Okay. Right. Alan? Uh, yeah, I'm looking at this and noticing that there's no requests from IT. And I'm just kind of curious about that. He, um, he, <laughs> um, I'll let you take that. <laughs> <laughs> so IT did not have any capital requests for this year. Um, they still have capital needs that has typically been funded in um, the operating budget through capital outlay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, that is the kind of one budget that we have kept in trying to balance the operating or the operational budget for fiscal year 21. So um, he still has capital needs, but they are being funded through the operational budget through capital outlay, and there aren't requests for this. Can he you does explain have, how that works? So what's capital outlay? Yeah. Yep. So capital outlay, is, it's the what was deferred in the operating budget. It's police cruises, it's turnout gear, it's things like that. For IT, it's... Uh, I know the numbers. It's 95000 and 50000 I can't remember exactly what the items are. But that's what he uses to buy. It's, it's pretty much the same thing every year that he needs to purchase for IT. I think it's software and... Network stuff. Networks. Servers. That's Networks. Servers. Yeah. So yeah, that's servers. A, Thank yeah. you. That's another total number that's not... That's, in, that lives in the operating budget. So, but in terms of total capital needs, that's not captured in no, any of the No, it's not captured in I think the other reason... Um, there's nothing for um, IT is he does have previous capital years that he's still trying to spend. Yeah. Yeah. And what we've told department heads is we'd love to give you money, but spend what you got, you know, a couple of years ago first. Um, it's, it's very similar to facilities. You know, we could throw so much money at Steve, but if he doesn't have the manpower to go ahead and do those projects, it's just money that's just sitting there because they're trying to just catch up. So. And just one question about the um, those items that you're choosing not to recommend for 21. Are those being deferred to 22? I didn't have a chance to look at the outlays, or are they just? Um, I think so. Yeah, we kicked them out to later years. Well, this is great. Well, we, I mean, we, I think just because I find this with no firm commitment necessarily to fund them, right? They'll be kicked out for consideration in subsequent years. Right. But again, this is our recommendation. Capital Budget Committee could disagree and right. end, end yeah, up funding. Okay. No, I think this is a fabulous yeah, presentation. Yeah, no, John did and a great yeah. job with the gap budget. And lots more for us to, to pour through and see as it goes through the iterations. Um, I, I apologize in advance for any typos or little errors within <laughs> it. I do that on purpose so that I can <laughs> back <laughs> back <laughs> Make sure someone reading it. it. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. And this is great. And it's Sorry. online for anybody that's watching that wants to go and look at it. And if anyone accesses it online, um, uh, Matt Haskell in the town administrator's office had put some, um, you can actually click on one of the tabs and it will send you to the top of the header. So you can search it pretty quickly, which is nice. It's great. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. This is terrific.
Um, okay, so the next, um, the next couple of things on the agenda are really just to get some updates um, as we look towards the next um, four or five months. It's really just making sure that we don't lose track of anything that might be coming up in the, um, certainly the financial task force too, and also things that might be coming up for town meeting. And in that way, we just jotted down um, an update on the rink would be helpful. Mm -hmm. I know that just went out the other day. Um, and just keeping our eye on the McLean development. Um, and then, as I said, I will just look at the calendar and we'll take a look at that. We'll talk rink first? Sure. All right. So, um, I think by now probably everyone is familiar with the uh, with the process that we've undertaken over the last year. Um, it's the exploration, the possibility of entering into a public-private partnership to address the uh, the failing uh, the failing rink. Uh, that is a joint effort right now between the school committee and the select board to try to push this forward. The rink is currently, and the future rink would be on school committee land. So ultimately, the school committee will be the one that has to sign the underlying lease. Um, though we'll ultimately have to go to town meeting, uh, obviously, to be re to be uh, uh, sort of endorsed and for any for the uh, zoning change that will be required. But the town administrator's office, huge thanks actually to all the work that Jeffrey and the team has done to sort of push this forward, has actually taken on the RFP process. They're more familiar with that process. They have a little, the capacity to do it. Uh, so it has been driving that process. So it's been a joint effort. Uh, we've gotten a lot of community feedback over the last year. And in fact, I'll say it has been uh, really very, very helpful. The RFP has evolved significantly. Um, pleased to say that a final version of the RFP was put in front of the school committee and the select board in a joint meeting uh, last week and was unanimously endorsed by both bodies. Uh, that RFP was published today, right? It went out yep. formally today, um, which is great. Uh, and we have, actually, we can pass around the calendar if folks oh, great. want to just see Thank the two dates. Patrice and, and her office put this together. Uh, but uh, RFP actually goes out today on March the 20th. We should get back proposals from any potential applicants. Um, it gives them uh, nine weeks, uh, which we're told is, you know, it's about the right amount of time for, uh, for applicants to review and provide a proposal. Uh, in around April 28th, uh, the school committee and the select board will uh, interview uh, the top proposals. Um, ultimately, on May the 12th, uh, the school committee and the select board will select a proposal or could potentially decide none of the proposals that are put forth uh, met, uh, met our requirements and we will not proceed. And then ultimately, if it is successful uh, on June the 1st, uh, as part of the town meeting process, um, there will be a town meeting vote on it. There are two things town meeting would have to vote for. Uh, the first is effectively to lease the property to the private developer. So that would be a vote that will need 50% uh, endorsement on from town meeting. There also is a amendment to the zoning bylaws regarding what is defined as municipal recreational use. Uh, because while this will fall into the category sort of naturally of municipal recreational use, the way the bylaw is written, the notion of a public-private partnership is not contemplated. So there would have to be a tweak to that uh, zoning bylaw to sort of expand it to include kind of a town-directed effort such as this, but that included a public-private partnership. Um, so that's the timeline. Um, we'll note the way this RFP is written, uh, we don't necessarily have to take the applicant's RFP and look at it purely in isolation. There is an opportunity for us to enter into some sort of back and forth negotiations, uh, not only to arrive at a lease that's acceptable, but also to provide some feedback on, you know, hey, you kind of proposed it this way, we're not sure that's acceptable, you know, what if you looked at it that way? So uh, we would very likely uh, kind of find a preferred applicant and then try to enter into that process and see if we can get to something that, that sort of felt right. Um, so that's a process. Uh, I don't know, Mike, do you have anything to add or is there anything else? Um, I, I, would, I would just add that th there was sort of a lot of, uh, a fair amount of late-breaking controversy about, about Great point. Uh, tennis courts mm -hmm. um, and the configuration, the, the use of the existing field space, um, which has shrunk um, you know, the new um, middle and, and, and high school building is, is, is going up. And, and one of the things that the school committee um, or, or the school administration needed to do before the school committee took a vote on the rink was to, to uh, decide how to respond to this sort of late-breaking community interest in having tennis courts 
on the, the, the high school site itself. Um, um, John, John Phelan worked with Jim Davis and, and you, John, um, to review all of the existing options for potential siting of the tennis courts on the campus or, or elsewhere. And, and ultimately, ultimately, you know, the, the, the site is just too space constrained and you can't have tennis courts on it, and so the decision was made that um, the school administration of, and of course the school committee will work with the town um, to, to look to the Winbrook courts um, as um, a potential site for use by, by the, the high school in the future, and that may require some expansion of those existing courts by adding another court or two, um, and, and of course some, some funding would be needed in, in a future budget to do that, but um, um, that, that's the only thing that I would yeah, No, I think it's a great point. I, I would say that while no formal vote has been taken, I'd say both the school committee it appeared and I'd say the select board uh, was supportive of this idea of applying kind of collectively to uh, the CPC for potentially next year, so it can't be this cycle, but the next next year to, uh, to fund the creation of a couple more courts. That expansion, and we're told that at least five courts are required to hold a, hold a high school match, that expansion should provide enough courts there. And then if all goes well with the future underpass, yes, you would end up with, I mean, if you actually look at it on a, on a satellite picture, it's remarkable how close the Winbrook courts are actually to the high school campus. That would create an opportunity for students to go under that underpass have a, a walk that you said was just what, a few blocks. It's really just a couple of blocks. It was <coughs> less, it was two, less than 2,000 meters? About 2,000 feet. Feet. Yeah. feet. Better yet. Sorry, 2,000 feet. Less than a half mile. Less than a half a mile um, between sort of the high school and where they could ultimately practice. So um, we, we will have to see how that pr progresses. Ultimately, it will be town meetings call as to whether or not to fund that as part of the, the CP, uh, CPA process. But I think there's a fair bit of enthusiasm that, that that's something that we should proceed with. So in an ideal world, what would the time frame, I mean, again, is it hard to say when that underpass is that? That's the one that no one can predict. So, <laughs> I, I mean, I can tell you that in terms of the TIP schedule, it's, um, it'll be 2024, 2025. We're slated. So it's some time out. It's probably about a year after the completion of the high school. For projects being done yeah, or for funding? To, okay. Yeah, for that funding and then construction. Yeah. yeah, I just wanted to say the Rec Commission just voted in support of, uh, <coughs> of the putting courts at Winbrook subject to obviously seeing the layout and the costs and that kind of thing and suggested that it be a town, you know, um, or school department uh, project for the CPC. I think that's great. Fantastic to have their endorsement as well. Great. Thank you. Absolutely. Perfect. Okay. Um, how about then, do you want to do the task force too, or? Sure, yeah, we can do a quick update on the financial task force. So financial task force continues to, um, to do its work. The committee's meeting, uh, what's that? Yeah, but it, 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 we're exactly with with sort of I say great great regularity uh, as this is a pretty active uh, pretty active time. Um, we've put together a calendar now that should take us through sort of right into the summer. Uh, the next big step of the project that's in front of us is to arrive at a five-year sort of projected plan. Uh, we're working with the department uh, heads right now to try to understand you know their their needs going forward. Um, and working to try to strike a balance, or at least get an understanding from the, de from the department heads of, you know, what are their budget needs if one thinks about a budget in terms of a level services budget? And, of course, there's a lot of different ways to define that. We're not saying a level funded budget, but if the standard is sort of a level services budget, uh, what do they think that they would need? And, of course, the example there is if enrollment in the schools were to continue to go up, we need to put more money into the school budget just to maintain level services. But also to take this as an opportunity to work with the department heads to say, well, all right, if you went beyond level services, there's some things obviously many departments have been looking to do for many years to provide some, in many ways, much needed uh, services to the town. You know, what would that look like? Uh, and we're working through a process right now, and Teresa, you're 
doing a lot of work now with each of the department heads to sort of compile that. Um, John's been involved as well. Glenn, Glenn uh, Castro's been involved as well. And our goal is to sort of put together that five-year plan, which will hopefully pr sort of first and foremost give us a view of, you know, what are, what are the, the department heads looking for? What do we think the town ultimately needs? And then we'll also try to get a sense of where are we in terms of a level services budget and then figure out ultimately what the recommendation is, which probably falls somewhere in between those, uh, those two. So that process is underway. Keen to get this group's involve, involvement, and you know, we need to catch up with yep. Lori to figure out the exact timing on it, but I think we're envisioning something at the end of February, maybe early March, yep. where you know, nothing will be finalized at that point, um, where we'd like to sort of put this in, in front of this group and, uh, and get your input. Um, such that we can then uh, kind of guide the next iteration with the goal of, you know, getting to a, you know, finalized of sorts or a sort of a view of what that uh, five-year plan looks like in the March time frame um, and then start to think about uh, as a select board, what do we think this might look like in terms of an override if we were to ultimately put that on the ballot, um, planning on doing an upgrade, update uh, with a fair bit of uh, information to town meeting at the, at the um, May, uh, May, June town meeting, and then ultimately a decision will have to be made this summer uh, to formally put this on the ballot and to determine what the size of that override is. I would say kind of commensurate with that, we will also be looking to provide a sort of final report of the financial task force, which will provide not only that context, but also can make a series of additional uh, recommendations. So a uh, lot to do right now, busy time, but uh, you know, I'd say proceeding relatively well. Um, one other comment I will make uh, just sort of quickly is we did spend a chunk of the time at the last meeting talking about uh, some kind of growing concerns over the last couple of weeks as tax bills have actually gone out. Um, there's been a number of residents have reached out to members of the select board, other members of the financial task force have heard about it. You've seen some of it in social media, certainly the town administrator's office has got calls, as has the treasurer's office, as has the board of assessors. Uh, there was a relatively large increase in valuations, um, particularly land valuations in town, um, and that's causing, uh, you know, even though the tax rate went down, that's causing some relatively, uh, for some uh, residents, relatively significant increases in taxes. So. Uh, conscious of trying to understand that, um, partially in the context of, you know, an ultimate uh, potential override so that we can, you know, understand how to communicate to, uh, to folks now, but also just a recognition that um, clearly there needs to be some more education because uh, there's a lot of people that, that just don't understand, understandably, because it's pretty complex how it all works, and we're going to embark upon in the next few weeks a variety of efforts sort of independent of the financial task force, um, but as, as context, some amount of education about the tax bill process, what's involved, how the valuations occur, et cetera. We've invited the Board of Assessors to come to the next select board meeting. We're optimistic that they'll join us and want to put together a plan of kind of how we communicate uh, some of this more broadly. Yeah. So my understanding, and I just want to test this, has always been that because Prop 2.5 talks about the total tax levy, that if the valuations go up, the tax rate goes down, yep. and none of that has an impact on your actually actual tax bill unless your valuation goes up compared to somebody else's that doesn't go up quite as much. So it's more a question of redistributing the tax burden. Correct. Rather than totally increasing it on everyone. So Correct. if you're looking at whatever the has happened with the valuation, do you know, is it, because I've been seeing this everywhere and have yep. chosen not to <laughs> weigh yeah. in because I want to know that I have the right information. Do you know yet um, a little more information about whatever's happened in the revaluations? I mean, is it, I know that they're on an every five-year cycle, I think yeah, it, it is. Yeah, it was a cert And so was it just, year. was it just, a, a, you know, 20% of the town that experienced this increase or? I, don't, I think it was 30%. So it's, what, it's part of that revaluation years. cycle. Yeah, it, we were, this was a certification year. Uh -huh. I mean, it was like the perfect storm, debt exclusion, certification year, values just rose. Um, but, yeah. I mean, if everybody's values had gone up, nobody would have seen anything right. other yeah, than that. Yeah, they all have gone up either. Right, right. Yeah. no, it's not. Yeah. I, and I, it's the way they do the assessments. Um, a, a big one is if you're a resident and, for whatever reason, the assessors don't go in, their ha in your house, then they have an automatic number that they assign to that, whether 
it's true or not. So there's different things that happen when they go out and assess properties. So we're trying to get those types of things out there to the public. We're going to try and work on a Q&A um, so people understand that there is a lot that goes into the valuation of a property. And those are some of the questions that we're actually looking forward to talking to the assessors about, right? I th if, if I recall correctly, when they came to us, they said that property values in town in aggregate went up 11%. So kind of across the board, 11% now, because we can only have a 2.5% increase in our levy, that meant, as I think everyone's aware, the tax rate fell. But there certainly are people that are saying, my assessment went up 30%. Yeah, so presumably, if someone went up 30, there's yeah. someone else who is less than 11%. So, so sort of figuring out how some of that works, I think, is what we're hoping to do in the next. And, and the residents have a remedy. There is an abatement process. Um, yeah. Abatements go until the end of this month. February 3rd, I think. That's the first. Final. First. What's the deadline? What is that? February first. The deadline for applying for file an abatement. Yes, to actually get the paperwork and filing it with the assessor's office. It's February first. So there is that. Um, we planned on having a considerable amount of abatements this year, um, and I think those numbers are going to hold. And then, of course, the other piece of this is tax bills are also going up because this is the first sort of tranche of borrowing. Um, that's actually hitting. So even though Prop 2.5 kind of limits uh, how much the levy can go up, on top of that adjustment, you had the first set of borrowing hitting. So it really was, as Patrice says, a bit of the per perfect storm that I think um, is, is a bit of a shock to uh, a number of taxpayers. So we well, should coordinate with you. We were thinking perhaps the assessors would come here to the Warren Committee, but that's... Um, because I think it would help with the education. It would educate yeah, all of us. We can have all the questions and also for the broader public. So, um, can I, well, I'm to, go ahead. I just wanted to ask about the, you said it was a certification year. Yeah. So they do go through every year and yeah. go through a certain number of, mm -hmm. a certain percentage of the houses. What does the certification year do? It's when they, it's when they submit to DOR. It's, it's the DOR process and how they go through it. But and how does that impact? Um, it's just the, the, the values. I think DOR takes a harder look at it. Um, so, for, for example, we were ready to go um, in early December for our tax classification hearing. DOR was not. So DOR was taking a lot of extra time with the values because it was a, from what they deem our certification year, even though we do it every year. Just trying to understand how the fact that it's a certification year impacts people's tax bills. I think that the assessors have to... Um, there's more feet on the ground. There's more properties assessed, I believe, in the certification year. Okay, thank you. Is the 11% year over year, or is that from I, the last? I think we should ask the assessors exactly what that, what that is, but um, that is my understanding. Last year's collective property okay. value in town, Got it. assessments increased, was the collective property value in town a year later, and it's 11% higher. And, and we should ask this of the assessors too, but uh, I'm just curious if you know, for, so for the, the debt exclusion, if you had your property reassessed to a higher number, then you are paying on a higher number on the debt exclusion than you were. So if it went up 30%, that's a significant also, okay. Yes. Yep. That's so that's one. Because you, you, get, you kind time. of get hit twice. Um, the two and a half, it you kind of, the tax rate and stuff kind of yeah, equalizes you out a little bit because the tax rate goes down and when the valuation goes up. But when but when it's a debt exclusion, that's based on the actual valuation of your home, right? So it is a little uneven because the next, it'll be another year before the next group gets their homes re, okay. Uh, I don't know, Jeff, do you have anything to add? Or Not Patrice or anything like that? Uh, Thank you very much. Absolutely. Um, how about the McLean? Sure. So in the quest to find more tax revenue in town, um, <laughs> yeah. McLean is proposing a development on Zone 3 up at the McLean site. Uh, they have partnered with Northland Development. Northland Development also did Zone 2 um, in the town. The planning board is meeting on February 21st. That's next Tuesday. It will be the first public meeting, uh, public hearing on the proposed project. So since we've been working on um, trying to get the developer to kind of 
meet some of the town's needs, which is senior housing, affordable housing. There's also a market rate unit. There's been some concerns on impact of services to the town. I'm hearing that from a lot of residents that they, they are concerned because of projects in the past like Acorn Park. We don't know the true impact of Cushing Square yet because that won't be fully online until the end of next, or the end of this year, I believe. So what we have done is we have engaged the demographer that did the school study uh, back in 2016 when the school was trying to um, get data on enrollment to project how to um, structure the grades for the new high school. It's McGibbon's dem demographics. Um, I spoke to Jerry McGibbon um, last week, who's, I have to say, one of the most interesting people I've ever spoken to. <laughs> um, and I would love to talk to him more. Um, we developed a scope of services for him. Um, one of the, be uh, the great things about the demographic study in 16, he, also ha he already has a lot of the data, so another firm wouldn't have to go and track that down. So we're hoping by the end of March, to present uh, a report from Mr. McGibbons to the select board on impact of services using um, information and data from Acorn Park and Cushing Square. We want to know impact on essential services and also enrollment that could be, um, um, that we could get from a Northland development on zone three. So that's kind of where we are. Do they look at other towns like at a similar, similar development that might be in Lexington or Newton and what yeah I mean he's <laughs> he's a pretty um, smart guy he's he's got numbers coming out of every which way I was trying to throw up you know throw statistics at him and he would just throw them right back so I think he's just he, he's gonna look at um, the development he's gonna look at enrollment numbers he's gonna request data from us I haven't gotten there yet we're gonna be sitting down next week if he does look at other towns I he might I'd, I'd have to ask him that question he did for the, I know um, back when we did this study as part of the school committee, he did look at uh, adjacent like, towns to actually figure things. out what enrollment trends they were seeing and then use those to guide his uh, uh, predictions. Because I wondered about looking at developments that are similar, for example, and seeing what how many school children are generated out of you Yeah, know, I mean, I think what, that, there's a lot of perceptions about um, projects like this and what who's yeah. moving into them, and then there's, the demographics, which he has, and I think we're just trying to get a true, honest sense of what this potential development could be on the town, and then offset that with potential revenue and see where we come up. So if obviously if we're getting a million dollars in revenue, but it costs us a million five in services, you know, I think town meeting is going to want to know that. I would certainly echo Anne's comment. The, the broader <clears throat> universe of projects he looks, the better the picture's likely to be than looking at Acorn Park and extrapolating from one. So That may be something we can help him with. I think it's a good point. Yeah. Maybe we can help recommend a few, like, oh, there's this one in Lexington, there's this two in Arlington. We're trying to help point, point him in the right direction. Northland has done. I, th yeah. I think they're doing another project do. elsewhere. Yeah. This is a very different project. I mean, it, working with... Um, is it the housing trust? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. working with different folks in town. I mean, it, it's very different from Acorn Park and it is. Right. and you know the Cushing whatever Cushing Village is called now. Um, there's is it senior limited housing or there's some senior housing, there's affordable housing, affordable. and then there's market rate units. Right, and there's purchase some. A lot of it is rental, and yep. some of it is yeah, purchase. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a mix, and I, it's right. a mix because we're trying to address everybody's Everybody. needs and, and wants at the table. But there's a greater percentage of this that is um, affordable and senior, mm -hmm. um, restricted and or directed. And I just I worry about comparing the use of services for this compared to that because you're not comparing apples to apples. That's what I was saying, find, <coughs> project that's, that, find projects that are similar, because I think right. Lexington's probably done one, Newton's probably done one, where they have school systems like our, you know, whatever, and yeah. see what the, if you can figure out what the, what the use of services are in that situation or from senior populations versus, mm -hmm. you know, um, school population. Right, and, and Mr. McGibbons, he, we, we spoke to him for about over an hour, so he understands exactly what we're trying to get to. So, and like I said, we'll be speaking to him again next week. And Tom, then maybe this is more directed to you, but or at the planning board. But um, 
have we done a pretty good deep dive into the development company and and or maybe the housing trust people mm -hmm. uh, and what they're well, we do have the experience Reputation. of the previous. Yeah, they, they, they did the development for what was zone two. zone 2. Zone yeah. 2. Okay. Um, so I think there's some experience there we can draw from. and it's Several pro several other projects in the area. Okay. Yes. So I, I, think it's, it's a, I think it's a credible developer, I would say. I think the question that the town will have to work through is, is this, the, is this what we would like to happen in that, you know, one of the few remaining undeveloped parcels that, that we can? They have a very controversial project going on in Newton. Well, I thought yes. I had just read. I thought very, I just read something about them. Very, very well regarded okay. institutional. See now, the, the, the uh, I residential asked the development. I asked the develop. I asked Jack Dolly about that project in a meeting, and he said that it was a different company. It it's, is a different company. He's Northland Development. The Newton. Yeah, the Newton one is a different Northland company. Northland Investment. It's not, it's not Jack. They had some hair. I think he said there there's some hair some shared heritage. Yeah. But they're now separate entities. Yeah. <laughs> Don't 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 know what exactly don't know what exactly that the story not, is there. That's, that's the, I think the third time I've heard that, and that's why I asked Jack. And that's what I think I had in my head that, the, yeah. that I'd read something. Yeah. But the other um, Newton one's called Newton Investment Investments, Corp, yeah. and he's this is Newton Residential. Newton Residential, that's right. Are we still looking at a, town, a special town meeting in March, or is no? That, so so when, because of that, because of the imp, because of the the. the the just people wanted to see some type of impact study and the fact that the demographer, you know, I pushed them to get me something by the end of March. It just doesn't timeline. It just doesn't work. So, so is there no town meeting in March? Correct. Unless you really want one. <laughs> <laughs> I can wrestle something up. There Come is, up with a citizen's petition of some sort. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> something. I think mentioned it, but there is the planning board's first public yep. Hearing on this is next week. Next Tuesday. Yeah, next Tuesday. Tuesday. So who owns the property now? McLean. McLean still does. Yeah. And there is, and this predates me, but there is a agreement that was signed between the town and McLean when 1999 or something. Yes. That that sort of governs the development of this. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the other pieces. Anything that happens here has to conform with that agreement, and that agreement was. Has a, there's a lot of components and a lot of exhibits and a lot of things going on in that agreement. So there's there's some uh, uh, some things that have to be uh, accounted for there. But that agreement was only with that developer, right? No, it was actually with McLean. Oh. McLean has the right then to bring in the developer they want to bring in, but the project still has to conform to the to the, yep. the agreement that was. Yeah, and the planning board's signed. working on I believe an overlay district. Um, because the concern is if the project, let's say for some reason, fails, the underlining zoning will still be in place. And they're working all that out, and that's what's going to start on Tuesday of next week. Does McLean have any um, ability to change that, or their their behavior is governed by this agreement, it's like it's a so there's not really much to say right. as long as that. I mean, there's always the possibility that we could open that contract up and renegotiate, but... Probably not. Yeah. I don't think. I, 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 I think. I mean. I think that's Cases the complexity the there. Is just, yeah. I don't think anyone. I mean, wants to in the it. meantime, this property has been sitting there for twenty years. Right. And make you know no rev like nothing is happening with it. So we have a really good proposal. And to get to where we are now took over a year. So there's been a lot of work behind the scenes just to kind of get it to the point where we're ready to propose something. Um, because of the, all the different um, needs of the community, such as senior needs and affordable <coughs> housing needs. Thank you. Yep. Very helpful. Any other questions at this point? Okay. <coughs> well, I will um, just pass out this calendar working on the last couple of days. Some of it, I think, as I was, you were talking about, the ring uh, dates might be in here correctly. This is a draft <laughs> everywhere, We're written over it, um, and certainly not the... Um, Certainly not with plane yet. Maybe I gave you. Lori, can I just ask on this last one? Um, I'm assuming that given all the revenue impact, financial impact, that we will be weighing in on this McLean. I think so. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. We're still working on that, the, the revenue side of things. But I mean, we'll, we'll wind up voting on it. Yeah. yeah. So if everyone um, has this one, um, 
Basically, if, and I will send it all to you electronically where the colors make it a little bit easier to read, but the, the first thing to do is to try to have full meetings like this every other week and allow the week in between for subcommittee meetings. Um, because one of the first things that uh, I looked here was to put in the, um, the town meetings, which seem to be, I don't know why the calendar seems a little bit earlier this year. So there is a town meeting um, May 4th, 6th, 11th, 13th, of course, this is blocking out four nights. Um, this is down towards the bottom of the first page. But you will see on May 1st, Friday, is when the Warren Committee report is due to the town clerk, which again seems about 10 days earlier than last year. Um, which I pulled off of um, Patrice's calendar. So backing that through um, is, is sort of how this was all built together. So let, let's take this from the top. Going through, um, if you look at the 29th of January, we'll see if this is possible. But as we mentioned earlier, I think it will be very helpful to have the uh, Board of Assessors here at some point. I don't know if they can come on that date, but we'll try to get them when we can. Um, the Operating budget for 21, if this is correct, is on the 10th of February. Is that right? It's a Monday. Is that a joint meeting? Did everyone receive an invite on that? For which? Invites, uh, February 10th. Is it from no, I don't okay. think so. No. Invite should have went out. Okay. So that is the, um, the joint budget presentation <clears throat> to uh, select boards, school committee, warrant committee. Um, I think we'll see about this McLean thing. Then we get into the school vacation week. Um, I'll put in the based on the conversations we had tonight, we'll, I'll plug in the McLean and the FTF2 updates. Um, and then we go through having the CPA project sponsors here, um, followed by discussion and vote on those projects. Um, I think we get, when we get into the 1st of April, um, and this will probably, after we'll put in the McGibbon report, um, we'll have more information about McLean, but we can talk about the CPA projects. When we get to the 8th of April, you'll see it says the first draft of the uh, subcommittee reports are due um, and I would like to in here I've also put in on the 1st of April just to have subcommittee updates um, I want to think this through a little bit more but I think as we talked a couple of weeks ago or last month um, everyone puts in so much effort into the Warren Committee report and I think partly because I stepped into this role um, mid middle of last spring it will be helpful just to have some more discussion about what the uh, individual subcommittees have uncovered or what their reports are so it's not just here read the report and it'll all come out and we'll see if that's possible or not to to work into our busy spring um, so again the first draft of the subcommittee reports would be great to have on the 8th so that we can have a draft report of the executive summary the following week on the 15th then we get into school vacation week and all of a sudden the final report is due. So even in that one particular uh, piece, which is a lot of work for all of us here, you know, April, April's going to be very busy and March. And then we overlay into that the McLean, which I think we're going to have to look at very closely. And depending on what the rink proposals come back with, that also gets an yep. overlay and the financial task force. So I think there's going to be lots to do. I think that what this really showed Again, and the second page is just to go into the financial part of the part B of the town meeting. Um, but what this really shows is to the extent that on any of your subcommittee work can start earlier, even beforehand, I know that some of the at least initial budgets were put forward. Um, some preliminary work can be done. The more we can get a jump start on that, even in the next few weeks, next month will help um, because I think looking at this March, April, May are going to be pretty. Yeah, once crazy. the governor's numbers come out. That would be great. Um, so as I said, and I think because of this, I would like to, as much as we can, keep the, you know, every other week free for subcommittee meetings, but we'll, that's, that's the goal. I'm not sure it's going to be feasible. Is this room booked for all through so subcommittees could use this room? Yes, except for the ones, I think you'll just see the 12th of February um, in the left-hand column. January's mm -hmm. not available and there was one other date, but they okay. did put us into the select board. I can check, but otherwise it's all, all here. Lori, if I remember correctly, <clears throat> we met with individual departments after those preliminary budgets were produced and talked to them about changes or whatever. So I'm assuming that that occurs sometime after February 10th? Yeah, I mean, nothing's really changed in those <clears throat> budgets, but yes. Yeah. So I mean, we're going to be pushing out the budget a couple days before that meeting. 
so we should be thinking sometime after February 10th to have those departmental meetings. Which we could go ahead and schedule. I'm sorry? Which we could go ahead and schedule. Schedule, right, but can't hold, can't hold without it. having seen no, the, the numbers. We know when we're going to get them, so. Yeah. And there's a little bit, again, it, just, it seemed for some reason, I think it's maybe just losing a week, that I remember, um, that, for example, the Ed Subcommittee always had a little extra time. I'm not quite sure how that will play in, even if it's just a rough draft, but that executive summary has to be done and discussed, so. We're targeting um, August, is that? Right? <laughs> <laughs> Figure we'll act like the state. <laughs> Um, so sort of like I will, you know, we'll keep working on this plugging things in based on tonight's conversation and, and certainly as, as any updates come through, share them with everyone because I know we all want to get the spring blocked out. So thank you in advance. Um, I guess we can, I don't know if there's anything else, any other select board reports to share or you guys have covered a, a lot this evening? Yeah, the only other thing that I will note is um, we approved the traffic calming policy uh, earlier this, early this week. So that has been something that the Transportation Advisory Committee had been working on for a while, and I think it's a pretty thoughtful sort of piece of work that they put together, and um, they put it in front of us, and uh, we were very pleased to approve it. So there is now a mechanism if anyone in town wants to suggest or request traffic calming measures on their street or, uh, uh, Frank, I guess, other, in other parts of town, you can um, put that request, and now there's a process by which it's evaluated prioritized and then you know ultimately funded. So it's a good, good step in the right direction. Is there a budget attached to that? There is not. Um, not explicitly. Um, Glenn Clancy does have you know budget as part of the you know, variety of budgets that he that he that he takes advantage that he leverages. Projects will be approved and then the question then becomes once they're approved they still have to be funded. Some of them could very well be signage, which could cost a few thousand dollars, in which case that would be straightforward. Others could be raised tables or other things that could be measured in tens of thousands of dollars, and then that would have to be sequenced into the normal process. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And um, school committee? Um, up in the ring, and uh, the fact that the budget is being worked on, um, but it hasn't been formally presented to the school committee yet. Um, that's great, and that's, that's another thing. Sort of in our master calendar, it'll be helpful if you have any school committee milestones. We can just sort of make sure we're in sync. Um, that would be great. Um, are there any other liaisons, the high school building committee? Anything? Anyone else who wants to give an update before we adjourn? I can give a. Well, actually, you could do high school building committee. Yeah, I'm just so, trying to so remember. Um, I mean, I think that uh, two things I would note is one, steel starts going up this week. Right. Wow. So yes, like, so the big humongous crane, is crane there. and That's like great. steel getting delivered there had and to be a crane to bring the crane. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's the one noteworthy thing. I think the other noteworthy thing is that I think it's our February 9th meeting that we should be getting all of the uh, bids back. So essentially, oh, like it's so. all out there now, and we're waiting for all the bidders to come back. They all get unsealed, and you kind of look it up and you add up the numbers and. Hopefully it all comes in, you know, within budget, uh, and that's all going to be, I think, uh, evident on February. I think it's the 9th. I think so, too, and they're bidding on the entire project. I mean, other than the solar panels and west of Harris Field, but it's, this covers the high school, the middle school, the next four years. Everything will be locked in. I, I can't believe I didn't think about this before. How are we starting the project if we don't have bids yet? Have we <laughs> entered into a preliminary contract for a portion of this? Uh, have we bid a phase? We, we, we bid pieces of it. So there, there, there's early bid pro, the early bids are things that they get to very specific indications, such as the geothermal well, the foundations, and the steel were all things that were finalized, put out to bid. Those bids have come back. This is the balance of the project. And the contractor the who's doing that knows that they may not be the contractor who does the rest of the project? No. Um, so we're, the process, there's two different ways you can do this process. And, and the one that was chosen is called. Uh, CM contractor at yeah. risk. Uh, yeah, yeah. CM, CM at risk. risk. Thank contract you. Manager at risk. Um, so we have been on board with them for 
they're the general contractor now. and the uh, bids are subcontracts yes gotcha <clears throat> <laughs> Anything else? Any updates, questions? If not, is there a motion to adjourn? We'll be back in two weeks. Who's the oldest? We can't do that. Bye. 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 We're stuck. Who's the next oldest? Who's the next oldest person? That's the thing we need to know. Oh. Oh. I'll step up. I'll step up. Motion to adjourn. Thank you all. <laughs> <laughs>